Okay, today we're getting through a whole bunch of reviews. This is going to be an Epiphone Hummingbird HS. We're going to go through, see if it's worth the money. Okay, the Epiphone Hummingbird HS. So quick disclaimer, this is a used one that came into the shop for sale. Um, so you're going to see some normal use kind of swirls and scratches and stuff just like that. Um, but I'll try to point out ones that are actual finish flaws versus usage. Um, but yeah, really great job on the burst. Now, when you get really close, sometimes on these cheaper guitars, you can actually see little speckles of the red. And in this one, I can't really see that. So they're doing a really good job. Um, I have seen some finish issues on Epiphones in the past, but this one looks pretty good. And this is just kind of a guide to tell you what to look for, too. Um, and so it's a translucent finish, so you can look at the wood through that and see if you can see any spots that they either used uh, wood putty or filled or weird grains. Um, this one is a very straight grained top and it looks like the seam's pretty decent, so very cool. Uh, definitely a plastic saddle. You know, if you wanted to upgrade, go to Corian or Bone or something. Uh, same thing with the pins. I, I, I need to do a shootout and see whether those brass pins make a big difference, but um, higher quality ones are just easier to, to work on. And who knows, they could add some tone. Um, this one, not this one's a uh, sorry. The pickguard is silk screened rather than kind of carved in like some of the other older traditional ones. Nice four layer, kind of crazy. Four layer purfling, but I don't feel any edge, so I'm assuming that's either a sticker or some kind of decal. Nice binding here. The inlays are good. There's not a lot of filler on the outside of them, which is great. Kind of traditional blacked out Epiphone headstock. I like these longer ones with that uh, extended crown at the top. It's very cool. And uh, one of the cool features on this guitar is the Grover tuners, real Grover tuners. So they're they're putting a good amount of their uh, build budget into some nice hardware, which is great. Let's see. Let's check the back. I'm sure this one's laminate. So don't expect craziness out of these, but you know, the finish is nice. They do a really small, tiny black line on both sides of the binding, which is kind of sweet. One last thing I forgot, we gotta check the frets. So the binding covers up the tangs, pretty good. Um, the feel is a little bit sharper than uh, some of the stuff I've been reviewing, just because those are up closer to the five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar range. So I would probably dress these or have a luthier um, dress them just because they're starting to sprout out and get a little sharp down here. So um, we're up, I think probably about 30, 40% humidity most of the time here in Ramona. So we get a lot of fret sprout and we have to fix a lot of that. But um, yeah, so as long as you put some money aside for the budget for repairs and setups and stuff, I think this will be a good purchase. Yeah, there's not much else to show on this, but I don't see any major flaws with this one. Feels pretty good. Let's strum it. First off, just playability and feel. Good weight, good size. Tri typical dreadnought, about the same normal size that you'd expect for depth. Um, the frets are really narrow, which actually I like, um, so I no complaints there. Um, the intonation, not perfect. It's really nice there, and you go up here. And it's pretty out. So, um, you know, if you maybe saved 50 to 100 bucks to make sure that the setup was right, neck straight, bring it to your local shop, have them check the action, um, and then maybe adjust the saddle so that it's more in tune, that would be good. Um, the action down at the nut feels really good, doesn't feel too high. Um, ah, a little bit of buzzing here. So, a high fret or two. I have to say this is not straight out of the box, so maybe this is just a, uh, you know, a couple of years of it being well loved. Um, but we got to kind of weigh that in to see if, if there's issues with fretting or something. I know that's something that both Epiphone and Gibson have a history of, so that can be an issue. But overall, it sounds pretty good and it it plays pretty well. Okay, a little finger picking. Not very loud, but balanced. 
feel like it would be a really good writing guitar. Kind of an inspirational sound, which is cool. Play a little bit with the pick. Another high fret. Okay, so overall, not the loudest guitar I've played, um, and not a boomy bass, but the bass is there, and there's a really nice uh, kind of high-end crispness to this. Uh, usually on an amp, they would call it presence. It's got a, a nice presence to it. So I think I've seen the street price uh, for this under about 300 bucks, at least uh, used. This one's probably closer to two, 250. Um, but I think it's on par with that. Maybe if you put 50 or 75 bucks into it, you can get something playing really nice. Knock a couple frets down just in case you have that and then fix the intonation issues. But the tone is nice. Um, it's definitely pretty good for under 400 bucks. Uh, gloss neck doesn't feel uh, like the, what was it last week that I played, the Guild. Uh, just incredible finish. This one's a little stickier, um, but it, it works. And the neck profile is really nice. It's thin in the middle. Um, it's like a very slight D shape, so a little bit thinner in the middle than like a general curve. But yeah, I like it. It's it's a nice guitar. Um, good, good aesthetics. I know people probably buying this at least... 30% for the aesthetics because it has that really cool vintage old Gibson um, hummingbird style with the kind of premier inlays. Um, so yeah, I'm sure someone on a budget would make this look really good in a music video. Um, but I don't think it's going to be something that you record in the studio with. And you can play live with it, um, you just have to add a pickup. This model didn't have one in it, so we actually put a pure K, uh, the K and K Mini um, in this, so it sounds really good now, but just wanted you to hear it kind of acoustically. Okay, so overall this is definitely on par for the price that you can find them at. It's a really good guitar, um, as long as you put a little bit of money aside just to get it checked out at your local luthier shop. Uh, make sure that the saddle is intonated right, the action's right, neck straight, and then check those frets. So uh, if you have really high action, or you like high action, or you're doing slide, then the fret work doesn't matter quite as much. Um, but if you like low, easy to play action, um, when we got this one down to the specs that we normally like, you could hear some double fretting and stuff. I don't like that. So, um, but yeah, it's got a really good feel and hopefully some of those descriptors help you figure out whether it's in the ballpark for what you're looking for. So cool. Let me know down in the comments if there's any cool products coming out that you want me to check out and like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos. We'll see you soon.